So again, thank you everyone for being here. Um, it's Tracy. Um, welcome to Module 4 and our last live online session of the Academy. Uh, I have some things that I want to cover with you, but I also want to keep it really open um, to any questions that you may have um, so that we can sort of address those now while we're all together. I'm excited that there seems to be um, a lot of us joining here this afternoon, uh, and our internet connection seems much better than it was uh, during our first session. So I'm going to try to turn my video camera on, um, and hopefully, as long as we don't have um, any of those uh, internet interruption or bandwidth problems, we'll be able to keep the, the video on. So. Um, Let's go ahead and get things started. Um, so again, my name is Tracy Miller. I'm the Assistant Director at the Faculty Development and Instructional Design Center. Uh, this is my email. That's usually my best mode of communication. Uh, depending on, on where I am, I always seem to have my um, my handy, maybe too handy, but um, I can um, easily get back to you in that way. So um, welcome to the session. What we're going to do is review what we've accomplished so far. Um, we're going to a little about this week, which is really about active learning and engagement, um, but also um, our course content. And then again, I really just want to make sure that we um, open the floor up to any questions that you have. So um, I want you to think about um, our academy objectives, right? So we've talked a lot about you writing your own course level objectives, your own module level objectives. And so, you know, turnaround's fair play. So we may design the academy um, in the way that we are suggesting to you. And we have these academy objectives. And so um, you can see them here um, in front of you. Um, but I want you to reflect on them. I want you to take a moment to, to Kind of internalize them a little bit and, and make sure that we've um, given you the opportunity to um, achieve these learning objectives. Uh, just like we talked about in the presentations, you know, we often start a learning objective. Um, the students will be able to. And so if we were to say the participants will be able to, we want to really make sure that we, uh, we've we met a lot of our objectives here. So. As I go through the next couple slides, uh, maybe you have a um, your computer open and you have a Word document open or a notepad or something. Um, just kind of jot down your thoughts and your feelings about um, how how we've sort of met these objectives together. Um, I do want to give us a chance to uh, interact a little bit while we're in here together. Uh, it, you know this. It, Often this synchronous session is, is meant to foster some engagement. I want to make sure you have that opportunity. So um, if you like, especially if, if you didn't join the first session in the chat, please share your name and department. Um, but also um, maybe something a little bit interesting about you that even if you have colleagues uh, in your department that um, are joining us in the academy or in the session this afternoon, they may not know about you. So Mark's in the College of Law, and I know there are several uh, law faculty with us today. Uh, Carrots with the Department of Education. Excellent. I can see Brian is typing. Heidi is also with the College of Law. Brian with the Center of a governmental studies and a master's of public administration. Yeah, that's an exciting online program. Um, so welcome everybody. Just kind of keep chiming in there. And again, if you'd like to share anything, um, even maybe share a little bit about your reflection that we were just asking. It's with the Academy so far. That would be great. Francis with School of Interdisciplinary Health Studies. I, mean, I know we've got some folks um, from that group too. 
So while folks are typing, let's do a different type of interaction. Um, let's do some whiteboard practice. Uh, everyone um, enjoys that quite a bit. So um, at the very top of your screen, you'll see um, this sort of diagram that I have in the middle of the whiteboard here. Um, and you'll, you can see there's a um, red corner square that's in the middle. Go ahead and click on that, and you can draw a diff. You can draw a box. You can draw um, different sized rectangles. You can draw an oval. It's kind of fun. Excellent. I noticed that some of you have already picked out that um, you can change colors, which says to me, based off of the first time that we did this, is that you've already progressed into um, these new areas very quickly. So excellent job. If ever, anyone wants to try next, um, you can use that T, uh, which is next to the box, or you can even freehand draw using sort of the, the crayon. And everyone, thank you for continuing to add uh, your introduction to the text chat area. Oh, look at those faces. <laughs> yeah, see, I see improvement. I see improvement from the, the first time we did this. OK, so for our whiteboard activity, now that we've practiced a little bit, uh, we talked about in one of the presentations um, how our learning objectives are really the foundation of a well-designed online course. So if anyone would like to point out where they think the learning objectives or the foundation of a, a good online course design goes, where would you point to it on the diagram? And you can use you can square, you can make a squiggle, you can put your name on it, you can make arrows. There we go. Excellent. Yes, our learning objectives are the foundation. It's what we build everything off of, which is why it's really important that they're, um, they're really strong learning objectives. So last week in um, the Design Academy, we moved on to, from our learning objectives to our assessments. So if we talk about learning objectives being um, observable and measurable, part of the way we're going to measure our students' achieve achievement of those learning objectives is through the assessments. So um, where do you think in this diagram um, the assessments might be put? It's a little trickier because you remember it from the presentation. But, you know, uh, somebody has a question. <laughs> um, that's OK, because now you're going to know after we, we talk about it, right? No brave souls yet that, um, you know, it's, it's kind of anonymous at this point. All right, so everyone's going for sure. And I, I see a brave soul here. So really, um, we look at the assessments um, at the top. So um, we're talking about, you know, just how well the two fit together. So if this is the, if the foundation is learning objectives, um, then the assessments are, are kind of the crowning achievement right at the top. So um, now if you didn't know, if you had any questions about it, in the diagram, assessments go at the top. It was actually um, a hot spot question that we used in the quiz previously, but Blackboard Ultra doesn't have the ability to do a hot spot question um, quite yet, uh, which, by the way, a hot spot question would be great for um, geography or health professions because you can kind of put a map or a diagram of a body and have students be able to point to it. So I really hope they add that question back in. So assessments are going to be at the top. And then we have these three pillars down the side that our brave soul um, pointed to. Those are, are there's 
three other pieces to good course design um, that all need to align with your learning objectives and your assessments. And that one of them is what we're going to talk about this week, which is our course content and our course activities. And the third one is the course tools, the tools that you select. And so all of those are kind of supporting the rest of it. Right? And so um, that's why we do these things in this particular order. And I think I shared with you before that uh, often when I talk to faculty about, um, you know, say they come to me and uh, say, I want to I'm thinking about moving my face-to-face -face course online. And, um, you know, the, the conversation immediately jumps to how can I put my content online? And really, it's a good idea to start with that foundation, those learning build from there. So that is our little um, diagram. It's actually something that uh, Quality Matters came up kind of talk about how all of these pieces need to align with one another. Um, so, but I want to hear from you. Um, I want you to share, um, while you've been working on your own design document work, did you find that there were any surprises or challenges? And you don't necessarily have to talk about both. You can talk about one or the other. But if you could just take a few minutes in the text chat area to jot down, um, again, any of those surprises or challenges that you've had. And I'll use the time to have a sip of water or iced tea. Since I'm on camera, it's a good thing I didn't have a glass of wine. <laughs> Jennifer's in the office next to me. And I just heard her laugh. <laughs> Okay, I see some typing. And as you're typing, by the way, let me tell you that I know there's uh, this has been good, thoughtful, hard work that you've put into your design document, um, but it is going to pay off. Um, it's going to really help you with the design and development of your course, um, but it's also really going to enhance your students' um, success and their experience in the course. So, um, you know, good work on you, um, and um, you really put some valuable time into it. So, awesome. I feel like there's a lot of thought going into this typing. And just to make it interesting, too, if a lot of folks are, are typing in, if you'd like to add some of your thoughts to um, the whiteboard, you can go ahead and use that text, that big T, and just add to the whiteboard. Uh, Brian, technology related, I learned what that uploading an assignment, ugh, sorry, that uploading an assignment isn't the only step to turning it in. You have to push the submit button. <laughs> I will put, point this out to students with the first assignment I post. That's really, that's awesome. Yeah, um, I think there's always some assumptions and, um, you know, sometimes it, they seem really obvious to somebody and not as obvious to other people. And so, um, you know, it, it's good to kind of go back and, and look at your work and um, give students really good instructions, I think. Uh, one little tid Anybody that's considering using uh, Blackboard Ultra, the course view, um, because we've been exper experimenting with them in this academy, is that when you um, grade something, you can grade it and then you have to post it. So I think that is going to be one of those um, those questions that are going to come up for us. We've we've tried to be um, really clear in our, our instructions, but I think for those of us that have been used to using Blackboard and kind of hitting that submit at the end, um, we feel like we're done. And um, in this case, there's this additional step of posting, which is kind of nice because you can get sort of all of your grading done and then, uh, you know, post it out for the entire class to sort of see at the same time. So there's some advantages to it. 
um, I still see several people are typing, so that's awesome because you're really um, giving it some thought here. Um, Natalie found it difficult, um, really difficult preview what I actually um, I wonder how it will look when I am an instructor and have to grade it. Um, well, yes, and uh, one of the things you could do is, as, as an instructor at least, is to um, maybe use your student preview mode and kind of submit some of your own work. It'll help you understand um, what it feels like to be that student, but then you can see the flip side of it as a uh, as an instructor. Um, and so really everyone chose very different ways of submitting things. Um, some folks kind of just um, attached it almost like an email and then um, I had that box view that you could open it up and annotate right on it. Um, other folks submitted a couple different things. Um, some folks just copied and pasted it right into the, the submission box. So um, it looked like everybody did sort of what they wanted to, which is fine. Um, it just gave me um, kind of a bunch of different ways of looking at the work. Um, course design um, may be quite time consuming if you have 14 week course and try to replicate in class activities online and also map out numerous course activities and content. Yeah, try not, try to step away from replicating um, your in class, um, give, give the design process a little bit of a chance um, because it can be, um, it's not a one-to-one -one ratio all the time. And so kind of let the design work and, and see if, um, you know, don't lose those key moments that we talked about, though, that are in your online course, um, if possible. Um, will the students have the opportunity to do their uploaded doc before they hit submit? Um, not aware of. Um, what you may do is some um, maybe um, low stake assignments and allow the students to uh, upload two documents and that way they can do sort of a preview and then you would just grade the second one. Um, right now that's um, sort of the work workaround that I can see. Um, and of course I, I'm kind of talking about um, Blackboard Ultra Course View, um, but really you'll probably be using just the original view. And um, students are, they seem to, you know, easily submit work. I guess I would almost equate it to like, you know, attaching something to, to an email. You can definitely look at it after you've submitted it, which is why I'm kind of suggesting the maybe let them submit it twice. Uh, Mark's still concerned on how effect, effectively translate typical law school class, um, which is a lot of back and forth exchanges with the professor and the student in an asynchronous online course. Um, there's inevitably going to be a loss and it will require some kind of transformation. Um, but exactly how it will look, um, maybe some trier. I would also say, Mark, that um, if you have colleagues in, in other law schools that are maybe even um, written some papers on how they translated their law classes into um, online classes, it's, it's can be worth looking into um, because I, you know, I think your concern is valid. Um, but we're certainly not the the first uh, to try to do law online. So some others have have might might have paved those roads for us a little bit and, and found some things out. Um, how to ensure you have enough content for the number of credit hours? that I'm getting the questions already and not as many <laughs> I, I don't know I'm getting some surprises and challenges but that's okay um, so there are some um, documents out there um, I can even share I can I can post it up on um, in an announcement or um, you know on, on the Q&A discussion um, that gives you some formulas and what they've come up with is um, basically, the average time it would take somebody to um, 
read a journal article or you know you can tell how long it would take them to watch video um, but really you're still using the same standard you would in a face-to-face -face course as far as you think of how many hours you meet in class and then you times it by three for how many um, sort of things you would expect them to do outside of class so um, you know you kind of know how long your lectures are right because it, again you have that recording done um, and if you use those formulas to come up with again a typical student how long it would take them to read something um, even um, some estimates of how long you think it would um, take them to write a paper they there's some formulas out there but you're still looking for that same that same ratio of um, what 9 to 12 hours of work a week um, and I guess I will absolutely give you those documents yeah it's actually been um, something that we um, recently the School of Nursing was asking about um, because you really want to be you want to have that right ratio right you want to make sure that you're being as rigorous as you would be in your face-to-face -face courses um, and you're not being too too rigorous in your courses you're not giving them sort of too much to handle um, in you know in a normal three four credit course excellent question all right um, so just to review the goals that we had um, we wanted to not only achieve this, we also wanted to sort of form a community of practice around online learning uh, you know there are some some clusters in this academy um, but there's also um, a lot of interaction amongst those um, different clusters and, and maybe folks that you would have never had a chance to interact with before um, oh thank you mark for sharing that that's awesome I might even if that's not the one I already found I might steal it <laughs> um, and gain confidence in your ability to design and develop an online course um, so I used to work at the Illinois Math and Science Academy and so I worked with like really gifted students right they were the top 1% of um, math and science students in the state of Illinois and sometimes when we introduce these uh, any kind of them not course design um, they they look they lost a little bit of confidence at first because it was sort of like they suddenly found out everything that they didn't know about before and so there can be a little dip in that next level but I hope overall that that you were um, finding some um, some confidence gains and in, in moving forward um, Linda yeah and I know Linda we shared this with you an easy way to calculate time is to use a calculator and put the estimated top parentheses after each course activity yes let your students know that would really help them plan out their week right especially when they're managing time in an asynchronous environment um, you know maybe there are those working adults uh, that need to carve out an hour here and carve out an hour there and letting them know that you know this is something manageable that can happen um, an hour or two hours um, can really help help the students be successful um, our final final goal was to experience a variety of methods for online delivery so we've been primarily interacting in an asynchronous way and now right now we're uh, we're synchronously so we're in the same time but we're in different places uh, from module one you might have remembered some other different I and I've heard it in your design documents you know there's a lot of case um, based kind of delivery styles that are going on uh, the Academy itself I would say is a very project based heavy and so as you're connecting with each other and the discussion boards and you're seeing each other's um, the way each other are, is sort of responding and even the challenges they're having you're learning more about these different types of um, online delivery methods Amanda thanks for sharing um, some information from uh, Indiana Law Review Amanda is our um, 
online, not, Jennifer is our online teaching coordinator. Amanda is our teaching and learning coordinator. So she, um, both of them are, have joined us this afternoon. And so, you know, we're, we're team and I love the way you're just like throwing in those resources for folks. That's awesome. That's how we become a community of practice. Okay, so here's our timeline. Uh, we are check, we're done with modules one, two, and three, and we're in the last week, module four. This is where we're gonna uh, talk about these learning activities and our content. It's a, a short week, so um, we wanna kind of get ahead of things. Um, get those discussion board posts in so that your um, colleagues can then respond to them. Um, we can concentrate on that final phase of the design document. That's where we're going to add our content and our learning activities into our table uh, using the template. Uh, and I've seen a lot of uh, good uses of the template. Um, I hope it's helpful. It kind of um, helpful in organizing your thoughts and organizing the way your course um, pulls together. You can then take that design document and if you're working with an instructional designer, or if you're working with a partner, um, you can kind of just like, hey, here's the design, it's done, and you can really hit the ground running um, with, with uh, really starting the development part of your course. Okay, so. Uh, I think this is probably the last thing I have before we just kind of totally open it up to questions. Uh, the Applied and Quality Matters rubric, rubric workshop is coming up on July 24th, and um, many of you have signed up for it. Many of you have already taken it, so that's fine. Um, you know, you don't have to take it again. Uh, but a lot of what we've um, been experiencing in the academy share really align uh, with the Quality Matters rubric. And so uh, the workshop um, will take you through all of that. Um, the workshop will also um, be the first step if you would wish to become a peer reviewer. So if you want to be an official Quality Matter peer reviewer, uh, the first step is taking this workshop. Um, having um, like Linda here and um, others from the School of Nursing, um, they are doing a really great push in getting a lot of their team um, peer reviewers, and so they've been really strong in that, and um, that just allows you to uh, get, enhance your community of online educators. So I'm looking forward to seeing everyone at this workshop coming up. Um, but yeah, now I'm just going to totally open the floor up to anyone that has any questions. And if you'd like to try your microphone, uh, it's at the bottom of the screen. You could do that. Um, or just type them in the text chat. Um, does this chat stay save in the recordings. It saves in the recordings um, in Blackboard. It does not save when I download it and I put it into um, YouTube to be able to distribute. That's why I kind of uh, repeat back a lot of the questions and comments um, just so that you can hear them in the recording. Explain how you download to YouTube. Yeah, so when you set up the session, one of the things it will ask you in the session settings is um, sort of do you want the ability to have it downloaded? And um, so you, you want to make sure that's clicked. And then there is a, a download button um, after the recording's done. It takes a little bit of processing, but you just download it. It makes it into... Um, a file that you can then um, upload into YouTube. You can also upload it into Medial if you're using, and I use 
uh, video streaming library, um, you know, or any other sort of um, library like that that you would use to, to store your videos. Um, it comes in handy for me because um, it then becomes a nice link. I can do um, a level of machine transcription if I'd like, and it's easy kind of edit it, to edit it to do a full transcription of it. Um, so that's why I really like to just, you know, again, download it. It goes right into one of those download files, right? And then it, it makes a zip folder that you, you put into um, to YouTube. So I can send out some instructions on how to do that. I'm comfortable with using YouTube. Um, if you're not comfortable with using YouTube because, um, you know, maybe in nursing you're going to have some patient care or education might be concerned because they're student teaching, then I would suggest you use our uh, media library because uh, that's locked down behind passwords and our firewall here at the university. But it's definitely better than putting huge video files in your Blackboard course. You will use up your um, course quota quite quickly if you do that. Does anyone else have any questions? Ooh, Heidi had a bunch. Okay. I'm a bit concerned about video length and getting enough content via lecture equivalent to students before they dive into discussion or other module activities. Do you just recommend a live synchronous session in that case, or would you break the video up into 10 minutes each five or six minutes? I was wondering what might work best for law courses. Maybe a hybrid approach or variance in module activities is necessary for modules. So there's very research out there about video length and what it about 7 to 12 minutes long. And that's because um, it, the, your, your attention does start to wander a bit after that time period. And I'm not sure if it's um, this day and age or whether it's sort of always been that way. But um, that is what it's shown, that students pay attention about 7 to 12 minutes at a time. And, uh, and by the way, that's true for your face-to-face your -face lectures, too. And, then, and that's why they're getting on the being distracted. Um, but then as lecturers, we see that, right? And so we may interject questions or we may um, put a uh, turn your partner activity and things like that. And so how you model that in an online course is you do make shorter videos, then put some kind of activity, and then make another um, shorter video. So when you said, um, do you break up the videos into five to 10 minutes each um, five or six videos? That's exactly what I'm talking about. And so. Um, again, you can add some interaction in there. Short video, uh, maybe three key concepts, maybe they respond to a discussion board. Then they watch a second video, uh, maybe they're uh, then doing a paper and comparing, contrasting two of the major concepts between the two. You know, you're just kind of giving them some opportunities to interact with the content at that point. Interaction we often talk about uh, being between faculty and students and students and students, but they also sort of need to grapple with the content. Um, voice thread that we haven't really explored um, in the academy, but I know we have users out there using it right now, also allows you to have um, some interaction um, while your students are watching a video. So um, you're on track about uh, video length. Um, chunk it up and give your students some opportunities to interact um, while they're doing um, sort of this watching lectures or, or even reading journals. Um, how do you re recommend synchronous versus asynchronous? So um, I typically will recommend synchronous as optional. Um, again, because we're talking about uh, working adults, the reason that they chose an online course, an online program, is because they needed that flexibility. Um, so I'm not, it's not to say that synchronous um, 
shouldn't be done or isn't absolutely necessary to be done, but just think about it a lot and what it means to your students um, when you're asking them to uh, attend a synchronous session. Think about how um, you felt about this session. And so in, in some cases, I, I hope some of you are looking forward to it and you're finding a lot of value in it. And then I'm sure in other cases, well, you just, didn't have time right now to, to do this. And, you know, this was already an add on to the other things that you had going on um, this June. Um, and so, you know, again, because you're experiencing this as an online student, um, think about um, the one way that I absolutely love synchronous is to think about um, having virtual office no longer do um, office hours because you have an online course. Um, allow your students to either um, check in during a certain time during the week or have them request an appointment with you and continue to do those, um, those office hour activities that you would do your, your student. Um, the difference is they're going to be um, virtual in the way that it could be a phone call. <laughs> Sometimes I hear that from faculty. They're like, you know, sometimes I still use my phone and actually just pick it up and call my students. It's perfectly acceptable. Um, I see Jim's typing something. And Jim, I could, I'm glad you could join us because I know you were um, one, one of the ones that reached out to me this morning and did. Um, Jim says, I had good luck with having students sign up for time slots for office hours. I plan to do it again. Yes. And you know, you, you want to you want to value your own time. So I think the idea of time slots is a really smart one. Um, you don't want your students um, trying to reach you because they're in a different part of the country when it's not convenient to you. Good. I'm, I hope your client call was also successful. So any other questions? I can see one more coming in, at least one more. I have a virtual office set up in the course. It's Collaborate site linked and the office is open all semester. I meet students in there because we can see the paper presentation together. Yeah, and you know, that's, especially if you, um, you use it in that way and you're, you know, you're either sharing your screen or you're allowing your students to kind of put some content up in front of you. Um, you know, sometimes that's just the, the best way to talk it through. All right, screen share capabilities. So um, it can look kind of disjointed at first, but um, if I click on the share content at the bottom and I do share application, um, it might look kind of white when I turn it on because it does this weird screen inception thing. But then if I go to a different screen, you can see I was looking up some accessibility requirements here. Um, and I think everyone can probably sh um, see my screen. But basically, it's a good way if you did want to kind of um, share just what was on your computer screen. So that could even include um, opening up a Word document and, um, you know, showing your students could be showing your work. So that's just an idea to like kind of try out. Let me go back and unshare that. Stop making people dizzy. <laughs> okay.
And when I did that, I turned off my presentation, but we were on the last slide anyways. So that doesn't matter. Uh, Mark says, is there an online manual laying out all of the Blackboard functionality that would be useful in courses? We have a, a site, um, Blackboard. And so I guess it's a little bit more than um, a manual but it's a little bit more interactive than a manual so um, there's also a section of our course um, of our let me find that one for you really quickly um, where we talk about our online teaching support Let's Hold on. I have to remember the URL. There we go. This is actually a website that uh, Jason Rohde and I created for a conference presentation um, with the idea in mind that um, we might be hiring faculty, you know, very quickly before a semester that a course was going to go live. And what would we, you know, what would we want to share with them that would be sort of the most impactful? So um, I've shared that link up above that are a collection of resources um, specific to online teaching. Um, Amanda also said there will be an ultra guide put up on the website that she created um, with all the differences between original and ultra. So, yeah, so yes, if you're if you're thinking about moving um, to ultra course view, um, Amanda's guide will kind of point you in the right direction. I want to make sure that for those of you that um, are already working uh, on a course that's part of a um, managed online program that uh, at the program level that is where you'd want to decide whether the entire program was going to move to ultra because you wouldn't want it to be just in some core not others so i hope some of those um, resources are are helpful And then we still have um, still have plenty of time together, so just keep those questions coming in. Um, otherwise, if they kind of start drying up, um, thank you everyone for for being here this afternoon and, and carving out some time. Um, we'll continue to engage with each other in the academy. Um, we'll we should have grading done by tomorrow, um, end of day. And then um, as you finish up your academy project, we'll get to grading early next week and have some feedback for you. Um, this is not the, the end of our relationship, however. Um, just because the academy sort of ends doesn't mean that um, our time together does, because we will continue to support you in your course design and development. Um, Natalie is asking, is there a link on how to request Blackboard courses for the fall? Um, I can find that for you. We actually have a um, what we call Blackboard, self-paced Blackboard, and one of the modules is how to request a course. So I'm, I'll put that into the text chat area. And those courses should be ready re to request at this point. Uh, usually they are ready 100 days before the beginning of the course. And we're, we're within that time frame right now. Yes, Amanda makes a good point. It will look a bit different. Um, the, the, Initial look of it will be different, but you'll notice that once you get into the faculty Blackboard tools, which is where you're going to request your course, um, it'll look the same. But thank you for pointing that out.
Well, thank you, everyone. I really enjoyed this group, and I, I hope you're getting a lot out of it. You're welcome, everyone. You have a great to day, too, Linda. It's sunny today. It's not raining. <laughs>